So uh, I'm going to talk to you about uh, Flubot. Uh, I'm going to tell you shortly what it is, but first of all, a little bit of disclaimer uh, that the opinions in these presentations do not necessarily uh, represent my employer and uh, all the stuff they do. Uh, first of all, my name is Juho, Juho Jauhiainen. Uh, I'm uh, currently uh, working as a lead incident response investigator at Accenture. Uh, before this, I was working for National Cyber Security Center of Finland. Uh, I have a degree in uh, information security and cryptography, uh, and uh, I'm doing a lot of cyber security related stuff on my free time as well. Uh, I I, I could say uh, that I'm a digital forensics and incident response specialist, but uh, I do a bunch of other stuff as well, like uh, analyze uh, malware. And uh, <clears throat> uh, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about Flubot, also known as uh, Cabasso's uh, today. Uh, it's a Android Banking Trojan, uh, it's dis distributed through uh, SMS messages and uh, the uh, drop sites which are hosting the actual malware are actually uh, compromised WordPress sites. Uh, this malware has been seen uh, first time in the wild uh, over one year ago in December 2020. And the malware is continuously developed. So we are seeing a lot of new versions. And I think there is actually a new version which is not covered by this presentation. So uh, I, I think I need to <laughs> update my uh, details as well. Uh, it's trying to mimic legit uh, applications. So uh, the most of the uh, variants have been mimicking DHL uh, tracking application. Uh, there has been also variants that uh, are mimicking Chrome and also voicemail. And can you imagine uh, that Flash Player is also mimicked in, in, in 2021 and 2022, especially in uh, Android devices where it hasn't been available ever. So it's interesting, uh, interesting uh, uh, way, way to uh, swim to the phones of, of uh, victims. Uh, I a little bit want to illustrate how how the uh, this actual pandemic in our pockets is is spreading. Uh, it requires user actions. It's it's not a worm. It's it it requires actions from user, and uh, it starts from uh, infected phones. Uh, user will get an SMS with link to drop site. And if they do click the uh, website open, they will end up to the uh, to a site with, with tries, uh, which tries to mimic uh, a legit, uh, legit application uh, or legit website. And uh, it will have uh, some kind of lure that uh, the user needs to download uh, the application from the uh, site and then install it. And uh, as you can see from the, uh, from the little text there, it says that um, as the newer Androids uh, do not allow site loading by default, it tells user to allow site loading from settings so that they can install the application to their phone. And uh, we have also seen uh, drop sites, uh, which are uh, uh, telling the user uh, their phone number. So uh, there is a, a correlation between the uh, sent SMS messages, uh, the drop site, and the uh, and the uh, victim number. So so when if you get a message, uh, it, it will be likely uh, very targeted to your phone number, not to you, but to your phone number. If the user uh, downloads the application, uh, they will uh, infect their phone with the uh, malware. And first of all, the malware tries to find out which is the public IP address of the device. So it's using uh, public services for that IP info, ICANN has IP, uh, IPFI and track IP. And then it stores the uh, public IP address of the uh, uh, phone to the shared preferences, which I will go through later in this uh, presentation. Uh, then it starts to uh, 
connect to uh, to the C2 uh, using uh, public uh, DNS over HTTPS services uh, like Google Cloudflare and Alibaba DNS. It has also uh, in previous version it previous versions it has used uh, also Next DNS, which is uh, well, they promote themselves as a premium DNS service, and they started blocking the Flubot, which led to the uh, Flubot actors to drop uh, that next DNS as their as their one of uh, as their one of their uh, 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 DNS over HTTPS servers. So this is this is like the overview how the how the uh, uh, Flubot infects uh, the phone, and, and then it starts to spread. Uh, uh, elsewhere. So it's using the uh, victim phone to send SMS messages to a uh, list which it cuts from, uh, gets from the uh, C2 server. So uh, the list is uh, uh, likely uh, fr uh, stolen from uh, other victim phones and then used in other victim phones uh, as target numbers. So, so it, it is pretty advanced way uh, to spread uh, through SMS messages. The uh, Flubot has been uh, developed, as, as I said previously, uh, there is continuously uh, new versions coming out. And uh, uh, here is a little timeline uh, how often they are making new versions. So uh, the uh, blue part is where uh, I started following the uh, uh, Flubot and uh, its, its uh, capabilities and how, how it has been developed. Uh, and, and what kind of functions it has. So uh, I dropped uh, to the uh, Flubot uh, analysis uh, uh, in, in uh, June 2021 and has been ever since following, flow, following this project uh, either on work time or uh, on my free time. And uh, I, I'm uh, still, still continuously following the uh, updates and analyzing the uh, new variants of the, of the software. But the uh, key, key points were uh, in, in uh, November, when it adopted the uh, DNS over HTTPS as a, as a, a C2 channel. So uh, then it got hard because uh, the operators couldn't uh, anymore filter the uh, command and control channel. So uh, then, uh, then the uh, malware uh, got more uh, uh, sneaky and uh, uh, harder to uh, defend as a, as a, as a, uh, operator or any any other uh, organization uh, later on it has uh, got more updates which a little bit uh, harder the analysis process for example there has been more obfuscation uh, put it to the software and also some uh, DGA updates. Uh, I will talk shortly more about the DGA, which is the domain generation algorithm, uh, which the Flubot has been using uh, at least since the uh, last summer. So uh, analyzing APK packages is usually pretty easy and straightforward if they are not packed. And of course, uh, uh, Flubot is using packing, uh, to make our uh, uh, security professionals work a little bit harder. So uh, older versions of uh, Flubot used uh, APK protector, which was pretty easy uh, to, uh, to uh, deobfuscate, but then they moved to the custom, uh, custom uh, encryption uh, or, or packing process, which is described here. Uh, it starts with the, uh, all the strings are of course obfuscated in the first version. There is the uh, deobfuscation uh, part where the, uh, uh, where the numbers are XORed with the uh, given number and, and then it returns the string, one it string, uh, uh, to the, uh, to the actual source code. Then uh, it has an archive inside of it. It's a, a Zlib uh, compressed data. Uh, and uh, then it, it will be unarchived uh, before it will get decrypted. And uh, the decryption, decryption uh, I will present it uh, shortly, uh, uh, but it, it's totally, total custom with the hard-coded uh, password in the in the sample and uh, the 
the password is actually uh, different on each sample. So uh, it, it has been, they have changed the uh, password uh, along the, uh, along the uh, uh, development process. So, so uh, there won't be that many hash matches with the, uh, with the sample. So it will be also uh, harder to track which version of the flu but is, is uh, going around the, uh, uh, your country if you don't have uh, capability to, to uh, de uh, depack the uh, malware. Then uh, after the decryption, there will be another archive, uh, which is also Chetlik compressed data. And uh, after an archiving that one, we will get the actual classes of DX, DEX, which is the uh, uh, actual, uh, where the actual source code, source code resides and where we can see what the, uh, what the uh, program is actually doing. Uh, <clears throat> unfortunately for us, uh, of course, the strings are encrypted in the in the uh, classes.dex as well, and there is the uh, function. Uh, actually, every class of the uh, dex has their own uh, decryption uh, function. Uh, it's it's using the same algorithm, but the uh, uh, table of the of the uh, 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 in the curse, which is, is with it, which it is using for for the decryption uh, changes in every class. So uh, if we go back to the timeline, uh, the uh, change was made be uh, between the version uh, 4.5, which was the first version I, I got involved with, and uh, it was using the APK protector. And uh, then on November, when, when the malware hit Finland again, it, it was using a custom decryptor. So there was a lot of development happened before, uh, between the uh, these two dates in, in, in only five months. So. Uh, it, it has been interesting to follow follow up the process and how they have been uh, like uh, reacting to the uh, to the actual uh, actual uh, uh, things we have been doing for defending the malware. But uh, let's take a closer look to the uh, uh, encryption. So uh, this is uh, I think this is version five point two, which is uh, like a two months old version of the Flowbot. Uh, it has uh, the Android manifest is usually telling the process flow. Uh, so which which of the activities are done first, which of the services, which of the reservers are started. So we can see that there is this uh, contents and mobile QQ, which is mimicking a legit app, uh, uh, package name. And, and there is uh, there is uh, some kind of code which is executed, but we cannot find it from the uh, sources. So we can uh, we can. Uh, assume that there is some kind of packing in place and and if we go one step uh, before we can see that there is some package uh, which is executed before that and and uh, it's likely that the unpacking happens there if we see that code there uh, we can find out easily that uh, there was this uh, this uh, archive i was talking uh, earlier it's the uh, jetlib compress data the uh, uh, file from the assets uh, and a random random uh, folder name and random file name with the extension uh, Q Q U. <laughs> no idea how to pronounce that one, but uh, uh, we can see that there is this uh, file coming out from this uh, uh, obfuscated strings uh, strings, which is uh, which uh, the uh, uh, class is actually actually. Uh, uh, on archiving and uh, if we move uh, forward we can see that there is uh, actually a decryption function uh, which is used uh, which is uh, uh, and there are actually three arguments passed to this decryption function uh, which uh, uh, first first of the arguments is the password and if we look uh, up uh, for the password, we can see that this uh, uh, Chinese uh, looking uh, string, uh, which decrypts to the uh, ASCII string, which is shown here in in, as a, in, a, in a blue. And and as I said, this is a sample uh, specific uh, password, so this password doesn't work uh, on any other samples, most likely than than this one uh, presented here. And uh, that actually, that actual string actually means something. Uh, I, I want to know if if they they mean something. And when I put to the 
put it to the uh, Google Translate, I was uh, <laughs> happy to see that uh, that the uh, un uncle is unhappy uh, uh, for this password. And uh, there there has been also other variants of the passwords. Uh, one of the passwords was like evilness, 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 evilness in English. And one of the passwords was everlasting, 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 everlasting. So uh, I think the uh, developers are, have a little bit uh, blink in their eye when they are doing this because uh, this I, I found this this like uh, uh, golden Easter X which they are planting uh, into their uh, malware code. Uh, then then we can uh, then if we look to the actual uh, decryption function we can uh, see that the most of the function is nonsense and not used in any matter. Uh, but but if we look closely we can see that there is. Uh, only two characters of the of the password used and uh, and how they are used uh, uh, is shown here in the below. So uh, we we have uh, two words which we are uh, using uh, using for for the uh, uh, XOR uh, if if uh, uh, depending on the position of the of the current byte. And, uh, and uh, if we combine this information, we can write a short script that uh, decrypts uh, the flow bot automatically uh, uh, for us and, and uh, easiest up our uh, uh, analyzing process process uh, when we can just just uh, give the uh, give the uh, uh, APK file to Python and, and then start analyzing the uh, actual classes of DEX, DEX, which was uh, decrypted from the uh, original sample. Uh, now we have uh, decrypted our uh, malware sample, so we can start analyzing it. And uh, before that, uh, I, I, I wanted to show how this, this would look to the user. So uh, if the user downloads the DHL uh, software, uh, uh, or any other uh, uh, Flowbot soft uh, Flowbot variant mimicking uh, legit applications, it will first ask uh, overlay uh, uh, permissions uh, from the user. So it will ask uh, the user to turn on the accessibility service, which uh, actually gives a lot of permissions uh, to the uh, software in Android. Basically, the software can show user anything uh, over the uh, over the actual application which uh, is is really bad uh, feature on the on the android phone and uh, and uh, a lot of different malware are actually using this for the uh, abusing this uh, function then it will also ask uh, permissions to show uh, notifications for the user. Uh, this is likely due to the uh, newest feature, which is uh, printing the uh, printing uh, custom uh, custom notifications coming from the C2 to the user. So uh, basically, the attacker can uh, show any information they want to the user, and by that, uh, try to try to uh, fake any any application date that they want. Like I said before, uh, Flowbot uses shared preferences to store data permanently on the phone. So Flowbot, uh, most of the uh, options here are uh, set during the installation of the uh, malware. So when the user uh, first time uh, starts the uh, uh, starts the uh, malicious application, these are generated and stored to the system. So uh, the, these are basically these are the four four uh, first ones. So the uh, bot idea, default SMS application, uh, status of the notification interception, and public IP address. The actual the C is the status of the notification interception. Uh, it comes from the uh, C2 and also uh, this, uh, this um, uh, Flowbot has ability to uh, intercept the SMS messages. So basically the user, if the user receives an uh, SMS message, it won't be shown to the user, but instead it will be delivered to the C2 channel, uh, through the C2 channel to the attacker. So basically this application has a lot of capabilities, for example, bypassing MFA. So uh, after the installation, uh, Flubot is pretty noisy. It will start calling home uh, using the uh, DO uh, 
H, uh, the uh, uh, DNS over HTTPS channel. Uh, first, it sends uh, pre-ping uh, to the uh, DGAs, uh, so it will generate a list of uh, domains and it will try which one of them is uh, currently in use and starts the starts the uh, starts to uh, interact with that uh, specific C2. Then it will continuously send a comments ping and SMS rate to the C2. Uh, ping is actually it, it, it's kind of a keep alive comment. It also has a lot of information about the uh, endpoint, the Android phone. It will have a version of the Flubot there. It will have the uptime of the phone. It will have the carrier. So which, uh, which carrier the phone is using. Also, if the SMS interception is on and also if the uh, notification interception is on. So a lot of data is going to the, uh, to the, uh, to the uh, C2 uh, using that one. The, uh, the uh, uh, Flubot will also upload the, uh, uh, the contact list of the phone to the to the uh, C2 so it will deliver all the information found on the on the uh, uh, contact list of, of the uh, victim phone. I mentioned a few times the DGA uh, which is the domain uh, generation algorithm. Uh, we can see uh, from this screenshot that the uh, uh, Flubot is actually uh, looping uh, through the uh, uh, set a TLD list, which is, uh, which is uh, in version uh, 5.2 and above, uh, pretty long one. Before version uh, 5.2, there was only uh, three uh, TLDs, uh, the Russian one, uh, Soviet Union, .su, and uh, also uh, China, the uh, .cm. And uh, it generates a list of uh, 2004, 500 domains and continues if alternative seed is set. The Flubot is using uh, the uh, Java random with, uh, with uh, a hard-coded seed. So uh, analyzing and generating the uh, DGA uh, uh, domain list is, is pretty easy when you have access to the uh, uh, decrypted uh, malware sample. But uh, as I said, uh, they have um, introduced the uh, updating uh, the seed function uh, as shown here, uh, the alternative seed from the uh, shared preferences. Uh, if it's set, it will continue, uh, continue to uh, generate these uh, domains. And uh, uh, this is something uh, we can't access. So if they are using the C2 to update the seed, it will be super hard to uh, find out which uh, C2s the Flubot is currently using. As I said, the uh, Flubot is using hard-coded seed. It's shown here. Uh, it's, uh, it's usually has been the uh, 1945. And uh, it also is using uh, uh, the current year and current month for generating the uh, uh, C2 domains. So uh, yeah, so uh, <clears throat> it will, uh, the domain list should be generated in every month and also with every seed they are using. Before uh, implementing the DNS over HTTPS, they were using different seeds for different uh, countries they are targeting. Uh, and uh, and uh, that was, of course, uh, uh, that wasn't that hard uh, to block those, but, but uh, of course, every country had to generate uh, their own list of, of uh, domains uh, uh, the Flubot is using. And here is uh, an example of the actual uh, domains it generates. So on the left, we can see a February list, uh, five first ones from there. And uh, from the right side, we can see the uh, uh, March list. And uh, as I have seen, uh, the uh, Flowbot is usually using the .ru domains for C2 and the others are just there uh, for bulk. Uh, we have seen also the uh, China domain, the CN, and also the SU, the Soviet Union, 
used as a seed too. Of course, there might be others, but these are the preferred ones this far. And uh, of course, a lot of uh, these domains have been registered to the uh, uh, sinkholes, and uh, a lot of people are, of course, uh, and and uh, country search are monitoring which, which, uh, how many how many flow, but uh, instances are trying to call the uh, C two channels. So how, how the C2 uh, tunneling works. So this is basically the way the uh, Flowbot talks to the C2. So it uses a hard-coded uh, RSA public uh, key, which it, which, is, which it uses to uh, encrypt the RC4 uh, key, key uh, to, and to deliver it to the uh, C2. And uh, the whole data, uh, the, uh, the encrypted blob, and also public IP address, and also the bot ID of the Flowbot instance is uh, base 32 uh, encoded and then delivered to the, uh, to the uh, uh, DNS over uh, HTTPS server using uh, uh, chunks. So basically, it's, uh, it's spread to the chunks. And uh, then these chunks are uh, requested from the DOH, and which all, of course delivers to the to request to the uh, actual uh, name server of the of the C2 domain. And then the C2 domain is is trying to decrypt the payload, and if it can pay, uh, decrypt the payload, it will ask uh, answer the. Uh, uh either the comment a uh, command it wants to execute on the system or okay and if not it will uh not answer anything anything as it it can cannot uh, decrypt the uh, uh decrypt the uh payload uh the flow what is sending to uh here's an example of the query so uh as i said there will be the legit uh uh DNS over HTTPS service provider, uh, then session uh, session ID, uh, a number of the uh, uh, request, and then if it's sending or receiving data on the next request. Then there will be the uh, base 32 encoded uh, blob, and uh, then the actual, actual C2 host. And uh, request type is always uh, TXT. So it's always requesting the TXT from the, from the host. Uh, Flowbot has a lot of uh, different capabilities. Here are the comments which it can execute on the system. A uh, few points uh, I want to uh, show is the SOX connection. So basically the user, uh, the attacker can uh, have an active connection to the phone. Uh, also, it can uh, send SMS and also uh, uh, show inject, which are the uh, actual the uh, uh, phishing payloads, which I will show you in a, in a moment. But not all system languages are equal. So uh, as many malware, this malware is not targeting uh, countries which use uh, Kyrillic alphabets. So here are the countries which are not targeted. There is Russian and some other uh, countries which are near Russia. And uh, if we can see the trend, we can see that uh, most part of the East is not targeted by Flubot. So which countries are then uh, targeted? Uh, based on the uh, country codes, uh, the Flubot tries to send SMS. Uh, these are the countries uh, are which are targeted. I have seen uh, uh, information that there has been samples that have been, target tar been targeting also New Zealand, Australia, and Japan, but I haven't seen those samples uh, with my own eyes, so I didn't put them on this map. But these are uh, like 100% uh, surely the countries that have been targeted or will be targeted uh, by the Flowbot. The goal, well, they have financial goal. Uh, they are using phishing overlays. Uh, we have seen uh, these uh, in, in the previous versions, we have seen like uh, big uh, European banks as targets, but uh, the recent versions are targeting uh, Gmail, Coinbase, and Binance. Uh, 
And by the way, these screenshots are just the screenshots of uh, HTML pages. And these HTML pages also had comments in them. And these comments were written in Russia. So uh, that's, I'm not saying that's an attribution, but I'm just saying that there were some Russian text included as a comment in, in this uh, HTML inject. So let's make a conclusion. Uh, the threat actor doesn't want uh, systems with Kyrillic alphabets to be, uh, to be uh, infected. The C2 infra is hosted in Russia. Uh, the HTML code commented, uh, are commented with Russian language. And the old infrastructure actually uh, was sharing Russian propaganda. Uh, this was from a report, which I have a link uh, at, at the last slide of my presentation. Motivation unclear, a lot of uh, capabilities, but, but uh, we can just prove that they are uh, interested financially about the victims. And as I said, no attribution, but uh, I just want this to sink in. Uh, sometimes duck is a duck and uh, so on. I'm not saying that, that this, is, this is a duck, but, but usually it is. Yeah, but that, that was my presentation. A few links and samples at the end of the presentation uh, if, if someone is interested to dig in to the flowbot. Thanks.